What up? This is Rama Screen, and in anticipation of the brand new Children of the Corn arriving in theaters March 3 and on demand and on digital March 21, I'm here talking with the star of this new film, Kate Moyer. How are you, Kate? I'm amazing. How are you? Good, good, good. Congratulations on the film. Now, as I understand it, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, you guys shot this film right before the pandemic started, and you guys finished it right smack in the middle of the pandemic itself. So how tough, how challenging was it to shoot this film during lockdown, during that situation? Did you feel anxious? Uh, how was the mood on the set? Did you have to take extra precautions? Well, COVID actually started like the day I left to go to Australia, it blew up. So we wow. had to quarantine as soon as we got there. Um, and you know, we, we, we were one of the first sets that didn't have like a manual to follow or you know, like a rule book basically, or restrict like, you know, like a specific set of rules that were already pre-made for us. And we definitely developed a lot of them from, you know, trial and error. And luckily no one got sick the entire time we were filming, which is amazing, but it, it, it helped, it, it definitely made everything feel different, but it, it also helped bring everyone closer together because we were all, you know, working together to try and keep everyone safe, but also we were really trying to make the movie the best we could in the situation we were in. And we were able to, you know, spend a lot more time together because we were all bubbled together. We were pretty much just dorm mates for two and a half months. And I feel like that really helped, you know, amplify the relationship or show the relationship of like this small town just better and made it feel more real. Obviously your character Eden is sort of like the equivalence of uh, Isaac in the previous uh, adaptation. Eden, just like Isaac, is the leader of the, shall we say, the murderous kids. And there were so many iterations and versions and reimaginings of this classic story by Stephen King. Did you have to watch uh, one or two of them or do the old films in preparation for this project? Or did you rely mostly on Kurt's script? Well, the thing about this iteration of Children of the Corn is it isn't it's an adaptation of the, the actual like story written by Stephen King and isn't based on the movie. Mm. And it's kind of like a before what happened in that movie. And, you know, it's, I, I didn't actually watch the movies and I, I, I definitely should, but I feel like it was more about focusing on this story and what these characters are doing. Cause I wasn't trying to be like another character. Mm. I was trying to be, you know, what, what Kurt and I created Eden to be. Fantastic. And Eden is scary, isn't she? Or my God, your performance in this film terrified me. You seem like a lovely person. I mean, all the Can Canadians I know are nice people. So, so, so how did you get into Eden's vengeful mindset, if you will? How did you unleash your scary side for Eden? I guess it's always there. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I, um, you know, it's like any other character, you you prepare, you do a bunch of research, you try and get in the headspace as much as you possibly can, like putting yourself in these situations. But also um, COVID also helped a lot because, you know, I was missing with my family. I'm in a different side of the world and I'm in this environment where, you know, it's different. So, you know, my emotions were probably heightened because of that. And it helped me, you know, really make Eden as, you know, intense and as scary as she is and and uh, one of my favorite um uh, actresses alina your co-stars plays uh, uh your co-star plays Bo, in who is the counter of eden uh, but i noticed that the film doesn't start out or it didn't begin with having Bo and eden go against each other from the start you know in fact there were times when eden was hoping that Bo would join her team or Bo was hoping for uh, to persuade Eden to change her ways, if you will, which is an interesting dynamic. Uh, talk to me about the significance of that because it's not a straight up good guy versus bad guy from the get go. Am I right? In my opinion, and also what um, you know, Kurt and Elena have I, and I have discussed, um, Eden and Bo actually aren't that different from each other. They both they're both kids. They both they care about their town so much and they don't want to see, you know, the corn be negatively impacted for, for different reasons. Like, you know, Ian is, she has her own thing with corn and Bo cares about the environmental issues going on with it. Um, but they, they, they both want the same thing. Like they want the adults to take accountability and, you know, fix the mistakes that they made instead of leaving them with it. So I feel like they, they have the same idea and they have the same things that they want they're just trying to get it in different ways Eden takes the more like aggressive approach and they both you know they manipulate each other and so that they can try and you know control the situations a constant power struggle but it's not like they're outwardly like angry at each other 
And I feel like that makes the main two characters really interesting because they're not that different. Now, what's it like working with Alina? You've worked with uh, several notable actresses over the years, including the Handmaid's Tale ladies. What's it like working with Alina? Alina was great. We we both had so much fun on set because we really got to work on like, we, we got super close to the point where, you know, like we go on set and we just say lines that weren't even in the script and we'd be able to bounce off each other. We were so used to being with each other and it felt amazing. It was, it made the story more believable and I love her so much. She's such a great actor. <laughs> uh, I probably should have asked you this beforehand, but have you yourself uh, watched this movie in its entirety? Hmm. I, <laughs> hmm. I, I have, Okay. but I'm not a hundred percent sure if it's the version that's out. I'm not a hundred percent sure. What I'm getting but, at is, are you a fan of horror movies in general or are you easily scared? Yeah, that's, yeah. I don't like horror movies, but if I know what's going on, it's not that scary. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Um, all the kids in this film, including yourself, or Eden, as you say, uh, have their custom weapons. You know, some carry a bat, some carry a uh, machete. Eden has the, the one who walks. When working with blades and sharp objects or blunt uh, weapons like that, like the ones the characters had, what were some of the things that Kurt did on the set to ensure safety, but also to ensure that when you guys carry those weapons, you look very convincing. I, I, I hate to, you know, say this, but the weapons weren't real okay. uh, because they were being handled by 11, eight year olds, you know. Um, I think mine was made of foam. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was, you know, I think it was just like the actor was connected because we all got the same weapons all the time. And I feel like over time, we just got so used to like, having them like I had that sickle all the time and I was like twirling it all the time I even like told me to like learn how to spin it so I feel like making it believable wasn't too difficult because we spent so much time handling them that's cool that's so cool of course of course and you guys you guys that did make it very believable like I said I was scared of Eden um so I guess my, my last question for you is something profound here to to touch on the themes of this movie or this classic story um, in your opinion, Kate, what do you think? Do adults know best? I mean, are there times when like maybe the adults don't know uh, that well compared to the younger generation? Uh, what, what, what's your take on that, that whole uh, theme? Well, in the story, there are so, so many different layers and so many different themes. I think that one is definitely the biggest one where it's like intergenerational conflict where um, Adults definitely, you know, they've been around more, but sometimes I feel that they are, or in this story, or maybe I guess in the real world, they are concerned about the now and what's going on now, and not necessarily for the future of what's going to happen to the kids now that they're growing up and we've done this, but it's, it could negatively impact what they do in the future. So I feel like, yes, sometimes, most of the time, adults are right, but kids, you know, they their lives are based on these decisions that adults make. So sometimes, you know, there should be more thought put into these things. Very well said, very well said. And speaking of the future, uh, what's what's next for you? Uh, and are, are you able uh, to all juggle like between Hollywood gigs and something like uh, uh, gigs from Canada as a Canadian actor yourself? Do you kind of do both at the same time, both industries? I, I guess most of the stuff I film now is in Canada just because of COVID, but um, I guess, I'm possibly this year there is a movie called Out of My Mind that I was in that is going to be out on Disney Plus at some point and uh, I was actually in a couple episodes of season two of the series Reacher and I think that's also coming out this year at some point so I'm very excited to see those come out but yeah I mainly stick to Canadian stuff now but it's definitely you know there are American companies it's just like in Canada be safe. Awesome. Awesome. All right. For my fans at home, everybody go check out Children of the Corn arriving in theaters March 3 and on demand and on digital March 21. Kate, thank you for talking to me and congratulations. So much. It was so nice to meet you. Okay.